and we're live. Hello everyone, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, and welcome to episode number uh, 60 with uh, Beverly uh, Pratka. So uh, hang on while we, uh, I'm logging in early so that um, we have a chance to start right on time, and there she is. I know that the technology worked well uh, when I last time I was in Texas. So, Ta -da! hi! <laughs> Did I accept you early? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was here. I was sitting here ready to go. <laughs> I didn't want to be late. <laughs> oh no, no, no! That's fine. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm nervous. Oh really? Yeah. I'm nervous. I'm, no, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm nervous because here's why, right? Whenever I dialogue with people that I respect and admire. I always want to do a job that that will that will pass the the the, the uh, what do you call it the sniff test with all <laughs> with, with all your fans and friends you know oh I wow yeah I don't I don't want them at the end of the dialogue they're like that moron he didn't ask her any good questions <laughs> I'm sure you will do fantastic you so. have an incredible eye for detail I love I love that about you yeah well <laughs> you know you, you know uh, so so here's the thing right. When sometimes when somebody accepts my invitation to, to mm -hmm. come on, on the program, sometimes yeah. they'll ask me to send them like a list of questions or what have you. Right. Now you didn't do that. No. So, right. So can I, I like surprises. Okay. <laughs> that Let's might see. be my undoing. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, so my inference from that is that you are, ready, willing, and able to handle whatever comes your way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I have the best teachers in the world and I have my, my teacher, Sifu Singh, is the number one thing that he, he taught me is to always be able to honestly express yourself. And you yeah. can't honestly express yourself if you've had, you know, prearranged questions that you already know what you're going to be asked and you have time to prepare for what you're going to say. It yeah. needs to be, it needs to be honest. It needs to be yeah. from the heart. So it's really important. <laughs> I, I have to, I have to, t I have to tell you one thing. I saw a video of you doing a self-defense thing um, against the clinch, and you, and you said, you said, oh well, I screwed up because I, I, I was, I didn't practice situational, situational awareness, <laughs> and I thought, well, maybe the guy, maybe he looked familiar, and you thought he was cute, and so you let your guard down, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> It happens. It happens. I know. I know. <laughs> so, so that um, that approach of being ready, willing, and able to handle whatever comes your way is that from birth? Is that something that you um, developed over the years? What would you say? Um, I mean, before I met Clay, uh, which I met Clay when I was eighteen years old, and before that, I had never taken a self-defense class. I've never done martial arts, martial arts of any kind. So that kind of stuff wasn't really in my mind. I wasn't thinking about that kind of stuff. And I was kind of one of those people that I, you know, shake my finger at now and are like, you know, oblivious to the world and oblivious yeah. to the things that can happen. Yeah. Um, so thank God I found martial arts and now I'm, you know, a little more enlightened on that. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, so important. I mean, that's the number one thing that we push, um, especially for women with self-defense is situational awareness, is mm -hmm. being aware of what's going on around you, not playing on your phone, not, you know, messing with your keys in your purse while you're walking to the car from the grocery store. Because right. um, that's, I mean, that's ultimately the thing that, that gets people. Um, yeah. They could completely not have to know how to defend themselves and just be aware and they would be much safer than you know, if they were distracted. Yeah. Okay. So it took us about two minutes before his name came up and I was trying to go, <laughs> I was, I was trying to go for like maybe 45 minutes before. <laughs> Never going to happen, Dwight. Never I know, happen. I know. I, you know, because, 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 because you, you are, to me, you're an embodiment of, of the, the, the yin yang principle, right? Um, but I was still gonna, I was still gonna try, gonna try to push it, but you know what? It, it's done. It's done. <laughs> so, so, so here's the thing, right? Okay. So you're ready, willing, and able to handle whatever comes your way, but that doesn't mean that you sit around and wait for things to happen. 
Right. No, you can't, you definitely can't be um, scared all the time. That's, that's mm-hmm. another big, you know, idea that I, that I push is that you can't go uh, too far the other direction too. So you, you can't be completely oblivious, but you also can't be thinking about it 24 seven, like, Oh my God, what's going to happen? Is this person going to attack me? Like yeah. walking around scared. So it has to be a balance um of of the two of you know knowing what could happen but still being comfortable enough to walk around and and not be afraid and that comes from training i mean that's absolutely um what what it takes to be confident and walk around with confidence and um it's 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 all about knowing that you can handle yourself no matter what right is there um can you hear me okay yeah i can hear you the volume okay yeah Music coming in. Music. Yeah. I don't have any music playing on this end, unless oh, you're my. hearing the music in my head. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a sec. This is possible the... with these uh, magnetic earbuds. <laughs> no telling what. <laughs> what the heck was that? Anyhow, uh, okay. Oh, spooky. Yeah. <laughs> we got some uh, otherworldly stuff going on with our interview. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, so you don't sit around and wait for things to happen. Give me an give me an example of how you make things happen. Um, what do you mean, like? Well, you know, so there's like the going boost. and picking a fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I had that phase in my life too. I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, so you know, there's the there's the there's the off misquoted Bruce Lee saying. Mm-hmm. Um, Bruce Lee actually said, "Circumstances, um, heck, I I create circumstances." Everybody says circumstances, I create opportunities. And that's not what he said. He said, I create circumstances. So that, that's what I mean. Give me an example of, you're not sitting around waiting for things to happen. There are right. things that you want to happen. How do you go out and make them happen? Um, from like a, a life perspective, like business, yes. like making- Oh, wait, wait, you, th- you think I'm talking about martial art? No, okay. no, yeah, no, no, I was, no, I was, no. <laughs> No, I was no, telling the no, martial no, arts no. mind, like, how do you go and headbutt no, somebody? No, no, if you really no, want to no, headbutt no. somebody, how do you make that happen? Look, well, every, Dwight, you go every, into a dialogue where you e- talk about... <laughs> everybody, everybody knows Beverly Pratka, the martial artist. I can, we don't want to know about that. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just on that mindset today, I guess. I no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, to answer your question... Um, I believe a lot about, um, I believe a lot in intent and placing your intent on something (laughs) to make it happen. Um, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of amazing internal teachers, uh, first and foremost, of course, being Super Singh. Um, And then uh, we've had uh, Kelly Lake, uh, one of our good friends, and then his teacher, uh, Super Jerry Ellen Johnson. And I've just gotten a lot of of really amazing instruction on... um, mindset and putting your intent on things that you want and you know whether it be prayer or meditation Mm -hmm. um but just putting your intent on it and and making it happen obviously you have to do the work but within that meditation within that prayer within that intent i think the things kind of um make themselves available to you and the Mm -hmm. path is kind of laid out for you in a way that you can follow it rather than you just being like, what do I do? Like, how do I get from point A to point B? How do I, uh, you know, open this amazing school and have right. thousands of students? Um, right. It's what's, what's the steps. And I think that's the hardest part that people have such trouble with is like, they, they dream big and they want these big things, but it's about putting in the work and knowing how to get there. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where the, uh, the meditation comes into play of, you know, like I said, putting your intent on it. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tease you about putting in the work because I read, I read something about you and it what? said, <laughs> it, here's what it said, right? It said oh after, after, <laughs> wait, let me, wait. Oh, shoot. I lost it. Okay. <laughs> right. No, it says after a few weeks of BJJ, I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? And I thought, oh my God. This girl's braver than I am. I could never <laughs> say that. <laughs> you know, I um that's the one thing about me I think that is that millennial 
kind of mindset is um, we get bored really easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, yeah, it was, it was just, it was one aspect of, of the game and I was seeing so much more because I would, I would still come in and I would watch the Jeet Kune Do class. Yeah. And so I was seeing them do weapons. I was seeing them do um, boxing, kickboxing, Wing Chun. I mean, all these amazing, very intricate arts mm-hmm. and, they would also do jujitsu. So <laughs> it's like, well, why should I, I mean, why am I going to go to this class and just do this one thing when I can go to this other class and do all of these amazing things and have the entire uh, game encompass into yeah. one, you know, thing. But that's, so it's, that's it's not, not that I don't love way. jujitsu. That's, right. yeah, but <laughs> that's probably sounds really bad. Way, like I hate jujitsu, but I don't. That's not a normal way to think, Beverly. <laughs> yeah. yeah regular, um, regular people don't think that way. Everybody goes with that which is more popular. Right. Yeah. The easier path. Yeah. Or the, um, the more simplified path, I yeah. think. And um, I don't know. I guess I, I just I was never like that because I get bored so easy. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I like to change it up. I, I, I have a really hard time with doing uh, the same thing over yeah. and over and over again, which I've, I've kind of learned to get over, you know, being a martial artist. But um, in the beginning, especially, it's just like my craving for something new and something different and changing it up a lot um, mm-hmm. was really appealing to me. So, mm-hmm. so that's where the other thing I read, the concept of Jeet Kune Do intrigued me. So I wanted yeah. you, yeah, I wanted you to explain that a little bit. Yeah, it did. It did. Um, it's funny. <laughs> I started to tell you the, uh, the story of my, my first kind of uh, experience of training, my first, um, the first time I ever saw Jeet Kune Do, um, and it scared me when I first saw it, but then it's, my mind starts going and I think about it more. Uh, but I, I met Clay when I was 18, and he didn't expose me to his martial arts side right away. I don't know, it's, I guess he didn't think I was worthy or something. <laughs> 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 um, he, Little uh, did he know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. Um, but I guess after a few months, he uh, decided I was cool enough to bring me around. And uh, he convinced me to come and check out a class and maybe try it out. And I walk in, and there's a group of guys, and they're all, they all have boxing gloves on. They're all padded up. And there's this one guy with a motorcycle helmet on. And I'm like, what is going on? And I see Clay, and he's talking to him, and he's getting, like, real amped up. And then he goes into this a kickboxing flurry, and he straight blasts this guy across the room, all the way across the room. I'll show you the gym here in a second. It's pretty, pretty big. All the way across the floor and into the wall, and the guy's head goes through the dryer. <laughs> He's going to kill me for telling the story. <laughs> He's not an angry person, but <laughs> the yeah. guy just like it. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I saw that. And I was like, what in the hell was that? Like, I, I, I was, it terrified me. I was like, I'd never been exposed to that kind of violence and that kind of intensity before. And, uh, and so <laughs> later on that night, they had a, a straight jujitsu class. And I saw them rolling around on the floor and hugging each other. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll start with that one. Let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's go with this one first. Um, and then, of course, I, like I said, I, I kept watching the Jeet Kune Do class and seeing all the different – the weapons was probably the thing that caught my eye the most in the beginning, seeing them do all the, uh, the drills and the knife fighting and everything. That's, mm-hmm. that's probably the thing that, that intrigued me the most. Um, yeah. Have you, have you found that um, to occur – relatively frequently with women like they're attracted to the weapons thing i think so uh i think it's one or the other i think that either they're attracted to it or it really scares them um Uh okay because they're not used to the idea of you know weapons coming into play or um they think that they're too dangerous or something but um i think that the reason that it does intrigue the ones that it does is because it's an equalizer and that's a huge thing that I push with all my girls is that I can teach you how to defend yourself but if at all possible carry a knife Mm -hmm. and I'll teach you how to use this knife carry a knife because the knife it doesn't care if you're strong doesn't care if you're the bigger person it's it's equalizing 
you know, whether you go up against a tiny little dude or dude or a, a seven foot, 300 pound monster. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, you don't need strength to use a knife. Um, so that, I think that's, uh, that's, that's at least the thing that, that, that caught my eye and, um, kind of, you know, drew me yeah. towards that. And as, as, as they say in, um, that TV series Flashpoint, the knife doesn't jam and it never runs out of ammunition. Right. You know? <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a, um, I'm a big firearms uh, fan as well. I, I have yeah. a concealed carry license and I, I definitely carry, but I do not carry if I don't have a blade. That's, mm -hmm. I, that's just my rule. I mean, I, guns aren't as reliable in my opinion. Um, yeah as a knife. I mean, things can happen. Obviously things can happen with a knife too, but yeah. So, um, so I got to, I, I try to stay away from, uh, from politics as much as I can, especially in public, but I, but I'm having a hard time, uh, doing that with you. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask you a question. I don't mind. <laughs> right. Okay. You know, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to. Beverly, are men and women different? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that that's, I mean, you're going to get me in trouble, Dwight, I swear. <laughs> I think that people that try to make the world believe that there aren't differences between men and women are ignorant. Yeah. That's, that's just, that's just my opinion. I mean, yeah. I, I'm, I'm proud to be a woman. I'm proud of the differences that we have. Yeah. And to say that there's no difference between me and you is, is doing us a disservice. It's doing you, I mean, it's doing men a disservice as well because there's special things about us both. So we should be proud of our gender. Yeah. So it's a... Uh... Well, you know, I was, I was talking about uh, just in martial arts, you know. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you put the quarter in, you got to listen to the whole song. <laughs> yeah, see, I was talking about you. But see, but see here's the thing, though. Right. Like I said earlier, you you are and and I'm using the plural you, even though I'm speaking to the singular you, you are the embodiment of the yin yang because you. there's there's you as the CFO of Texas JKDAA. Right. And then there's the other guys. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Then, then there's the, there's the, um, the martial art couple. And then of course you have a life away from martial art, right? right? So it's, so you, so you, you guys are the embodiment of that, what I call the constant quest for balance. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, <clears throat> I, uh, thank you. That's, <laughs> that's a huge compliment. <laughs> I, we try. <laughs> well, yeah. No, I mean, look, hey, I have, I have the greatest ad from, uh, admiration for what I call successful martial art couples. You yeah. know, right? As a matter of fact, I was going to bring this up later on, but I'll bring it up now. I have, <laughs> I have a brand new, I have a, I've developed a, whole, a brand new program for you. Oh, okay. nice. Here's what it's called. Yeah. It is called the Beastly Beauties Martial Arts. <laughs> The Have you been talking to my mother-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> that is a term coined by K. Pratka. Yep. yep. There, I, so it's the be and she's going to help me start it. The yeah. Beastly Beauties Martial Arts Dating Advice. That's that's a whole new program I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm building for you. Uh, right? I love okay. it. So here we I go. I love it. So advice for a couple, the guy and the gal, are both into martial arts. What's your advice for them? Okay, so huh, such a loaded question. So, uh -huh. do, you have, do you have three hours? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I, I, first I'll, I'll address um, being the student um, and and you know him being the teacher, which is obviously our uh, situation. Um, I, it's, it's funny because I was just listening uh, again to, I think I've listened to it about 50 times, but I was listening again to uh, you and uh, Guru Tanya's interview. Yeah. And she talked about, uh, she was talking about her influences and she talked about uh, Malia DeCascos. Mm -hmm. 
And I was, uh, I went into a, uh, probably a four hour rabbit hole of <laughs> research on Malia. Cause I didn't, I honestly didn't know much about her. I'd heard okay. of her, but yeah. I didn't know much about her. So I'd yeah. like, this is an amazing woman. And obviously if she's Britannia's inspiration, then I'd, I need to know everything I can about her. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> but, uh, she, uh, she had wrote an article and she was talking about, um, how her and, and her husband, I think at the time, would train together and people would ask her, is there any problems with that? Is there any, anything that comes up that, that's an issue? And she said that, that, that there absolutely wasn't because in the gym, when he had his, his uniform on, right. he was the boss. Yeah. He was the teacher and I gave him the respect that he deserved. Yeah. But when we were in street clothes and we were at home, it was fair game and I could say mm -hmm. what I wanted and it right. was even, even keel. So it's uh, I think that's, that's huge. That, that, completely says it all. I mean, yeah. I think that any problems that Clay and I had in the beginning were ego driven. Um, and because martial arts is such a, a world of respect, yeah. um, it's, it's really important to respect your teachers and to listen to what they have to say. And me being the hard headed bohemian girl, I didn't always want to, but I think the minute that we kind of learned that and were able to have this like mutual respect for each other, that everything just became easy. So mm -hmm. I think that that's a really big, um, a really big thing. Now, if you're equals in the gym, if you're training together and you're both students, um, that's a little bit harder because obviously you're, you might be butting heads because uh, men and women think very differently. That's, that's, I mean, it's what? just a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh, the world. Yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> sorry guys, that's just a fact. Um, but it's, uh, I think that, you know, having, having that thing, sharing something like martial arts is such a, a beautiful thing and focusing on that, focusing on the fact that you have something so deep to yeah. share yeah. is, I think, the most important thing. I think that's, that's the thing that has made... <laughs> phone call come through. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. I should have put my phone on uh, airplane mode or something. Um, but uh, I think that that's what's given Clay and I's relationship so much depth and yeah. so much meaning is that we have this amazing, intricate thing that we can share. And I mean, we spend every waking second together, literally. Mm -hmm. Dwight, yeah. I mean, it's every second and every sleeping second i mean it's we're never apart right. and i i don't know about you but i i don't i honestly don't know many couples that are like that that spend that much time together that don't want to kill each other <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. the time <laughs> yeah right not yeah <laughs> or not, you know still have something to talk about yeah not or, successfully honey okay. yeah <laughs> and yeah. it's uh that that's been something that's i've really started to appreciate the last few years is that you know i i look back at at our growth and how we've grown as a couple yeah and it's just it's because of martial arts it's be, we've we've i think we've stayed together and we've stayed as close as we have because of martial arts because mm -hmm. we have that thing in common that we can always talk about and share and we always have this we always have goals that we're working towards we always have you know the next mountain to climb and it's uh it's, it's an amazing journey. So it's really, really important to remember how special that is. What if, uh, what if the guy is into martial arts, but the girl is not? Oh, uh, that's tough. But I, um, I, I know of one couple that has made it work amazingly. And that is, uh, Sifu Singh and his wife, Anshu. And uh, obviously Anshu, uh, did train, uh, previously, um, and she still trains uh, in the internal uh, martial arts. Right. And, um, but uh, they're, I mean, they're one of the most amazing couples that I know. So it's, it's definitely possible. It's just, um, I think the problem comes in where, like, martial artists are so passionate about what they do most of the time. Um, 
you know, especially someone like, like Sifu Singh. Um, and I think with other couples, it's like, oh my God, are you still talking about this? Like, <laughs> stop talking about martial arts for God's sake. And I think that it, um, martial arts is something that it's not like any other job or any other hobby, really. I think it's, it's something that's so deep and yeah. so, um, like, you know, you just, you want to talk about it and do it all the time. I mean, Clay and I'll go, after we're done training and tra done with glasses, we'll go back in the living room and we'll keep training. I mean, we'll keep, you know, talking about little things or little details that, um, that, that were important to us. And it's, uh, it's something that it just keeps going. Even mm -hmm. after you finish, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's never done. You just, if you're a martial artist, you're never finished working. It's not like you get off work and you're, you know, Right. End martial arts. It's yeah. it's always going. Okay. The girl is into martial arts, but the guy is not. <laughs> oh yeah, that that might be a little bit bigger of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think because <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I think the problem that comes in there is especially a guy that has a problem with ego yeah. and has a problem with you know, not being the biggest, strongest person in the relationship is, you know, that's, I think that's where the problem mainly comes in is that, you know, he doesn't, he feels emasculated or something, mm -hmm. which is kind of stupid. I mean, he should appreciate that he has a strong, amazing woman that does martial arts. I mean, yeah, well, so. yeah, yeah. Um, what, uh, so what would your advice be to a guy like that? Would you have advice for him? Uh, just that, just to appreciate the fact that it, it takes so much, it takes a really special kind of person to be a martial artist yeah. and to have that kind of passion for something. Um, and it and is a male dominated field, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, just in that it's, it's so amazing and so different that, sh that she's able to do that. So, I mean, that should be appreciated and, and revered and so, I mean you should be bowing to your queen yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. speaking of which I loved the um the article you sent me by the way it oh, was for uh, sure. For sure. such a great read uh, yeah. but you uh I, I do have to tell you you sent me on a uh a wild goose chase. It was just a rabbit hole. I, I'm amazed that I was ready in time because I just like underneath the article, there was like 50 other articles. Yes. yes. And I just kept clicking and yes. clicking and clicking <laughs> and like, I couldn't stop. It's like I did too. addicting. I did too. Did you, there was one, it was so amazing because it was like five warrior princesses or something like that. And there was, there was one where she was like in battle and she lost her leg, and so they had to outfit her with, like, an iron leg, yeah. and she kept fighting. Yeah. And that was, like, a, apparently that was, like, the first time in recorded history that someone used an, a, a prosthetic leg. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that was, like, you know, a woman in battle. And then there was another one where she, um, <clears throat> her husband was, like, the royal advisor of this army, and he brought her in to help with the battle. And so she was, you know, this big... Um, she had all these, uh, these big plans and she uh, told the army to go and like flank and the, they won the battle because of it. And so the king was like so um, inspired and, and um, you know, uh, impressed that she did that. And so she, he stole her away from her husband. He stole her. The, the king took her for his own. Yep. And he, uh, he, I don't know, she, she like did something like she asked him if she could like rule for a day. And he was like, oh, sure. And then she had him beheaded and <laughs> took over the kingdom. I was like, yes. That is the most amazing story I've ever heard in my yeah. life. Like, <laughs> but it, isn't, yeah. it, isn't it funny then that, um, that today we have this apparent struggle for equality and what have you, whereas it seems as if historically there was that equality. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So you know, my, the thing that sparked my interest in that was a story from Sifu and Asano, um, who knows, maybe a long time ago. But he talked mm -hmm. about a tribe, and I couldn't find it, but he talked about a tribe where the women 
walked ahead of the men mm -hmm. because they were the protectors. Yeah. You know, yeah. right? I mean, that's like the, that, that was the one thing I was kind of weirded out about that wasn't in the article was the shield maidens of yeah. the Vikings, like yeah. Lagatha. I know uh, Lagatha was, I think, uh, an actual person I, I watched the i don't know if you watched the show vikings mm -hmm. i'm a mm -hmm. big yeah. fan yeah um but yeah i, I was i was <clears throat> weirded out that that they weren't on there because that was a big thing that the shield maidens fought right there alongside the vikings and they were yep. um, what, what do you think happened historically to civilized natural aggression out of women i think that the um the fact that it was taken away that we had to defend and protect our families from being killed. Um, Cause if, I mean, if you look in, in nature um, you ask any hunter, probably the most, uh, the scariest thing that you can come upon is a female protecting her young. It's, it's, it, she has this ferocity that just, I mean, it's almost scarier than coming across a, a male. Yeah. Um, and I think that not having to, um, I think it is the same problem with, with, uh, with everybody, with, with men too, um, is that nobody has to, to fight to protect themselves or for, fight to protect their families anymore. Um, so that kind of, you know, through evolution just, uh, kind of made women a little bit more, you know, like calm and, and uh, they, they kind of lost that, that essence. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, if it's not brought out and used, then we're not going to have it. Um, <clears throat> so I think that, that uh, that's, I think that's what happened. I mean, yeah. So, um, so what's, what's, what's your plan to reintroduce that, um, that knowledge and, and, and natural behavior to women. <laughs> well, it's just to, 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 to bring that out, you know, to train and um, to, I think one of the biggest things that with, with Lady Cobra and the idea of Lady Cobra that we want to instill is that we want to learn these arts and learn how to protect ourselves and learn how to fight, but fight in a way that women were designed to fight. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's one of the biggest problems that you see in <laughs> female martial arts is that because fighting and because martial arts is a more male dominant world, that girls, when they, when they go into it, when they go into the world, they feel like they have to um, fight like men and they have right. to, you know, train like men to be adequate. Um, and but, I mean, I just, I don't think that that's the case. I think that we can embody that feminine um, aggression and embody the way that, that, that women are supposed to fight. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, not necessarily using power because we're not usually going to be the stronger person. Um, we're not going to be the bigger person. Um, so using speed and agility and um, using somebody's strength against them um, in a fight is, is really important. Um, so it's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's, I think that's a, a, a big problem. Um, and, you know, we have so many amazing, uh, inspirations for us to, to look back at even historically, like the, the legends of Ning Moi, um, creating Wing Chun yeah. and, um, Princess Josephine. I mean, those, those stories are, some of the biggest things that have driven me mm -hmm. into martial arts and mm -hmm. um it's that that feminine um aggression and that feminine ferocity that really inspires me yeah. and i think that we can use that and not feel like we have to fight like guys or be you know to train like guys we can we can fight like women yeah have you have you seen uh michelle yo's uh wing chun movie I have, I haven't seen it all the way through. Okay. Um, I feel like when I tried to watch it, it was cutting in and out. Um, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go back and, and try and watch it again. But, um, the, the one that I did watch a couple of times was the, uh, I think it came out on YouTube. It came out, I believe in 2010 
and it didn't have anybody big in it, but, and it was a little, it was a little corny, but <laughs> I, I like a little corny, yeah. um, <laughs> but it was really good. And it, uh, it described the story really, really well. And, um, I, I, I really liked it. So I would definitely yeah. recommend that one too, but I'm, I'm for sure going to go back and watch the one with Michelle Yeoh. And I think Donnie Yen's in it too, right? Um, I don't know if, if not the, the early one, I can't, I can't remember. I have it here on, on DVD. I haven't watched it in a while. But uh, do, you have, do you have other favorite Wing Chun movies? Uh, obviously, It Man. Um, and then the one, all the It Man movies. Um, and then there was one that came out, uh, The Grandmaster, uh -huh. after, uh, uh -huh. which I really liked. I really liked the, uh, the female character in that one. I can't remember who it was that played her, but she was really good. Okay. You, yeah, you're definitely a millennial. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got to. Uh, I knew you were going to do this to me. Yeah, I you knew definitely. It. I knew it. Yeah, you got to. You got <laughs> to check. You got to. You got to check uh, for uh, Warriors Two and Prodigal Son. But these came out in the 1970s. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. a big old school I know, movie fan. I know. Fans. I know. I know. I, I actually, I think that I watched the Warriors. The Warriors way. But I'm not sure. I've seen no, so many. It's just, yeah, I, I, know. I get yeah, them all and, jumbled and, up in my head. There, there's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of stuff with the, with the word warriors in it. You yeah. know, the, I mean, there's, there's the BBC documentary, right? right. Then, then there's the, the New York gang movie called warriors. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, <laughs> Warriors 2, man. It's a, it's a classic Samo Hung uh, movie. All right. I got another political question for you. Yeah. Are women smarter than men or are they just, <laughs> or, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 for wait, trouble. wait, 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 <laughs> or, or are they differently smart? I think that <laughs> you're terrible. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that it's the way that we um, perceive things and the way that we break things down. I, mm -hmm. I definitely think that women are a little bit more intellectually minded, um, mm -hmm. just in the way that they, uh, they look at things. I mean, it's, for example, when I teach a woman as opposed to teaching a guy, I know that I can tell the guy just to, to do it, just to throw a jab. Yeah. And most likely he'll do it yeah. um, with with a woman and with myself when I was when I was coming up in, in martial arts. Um, it was about the details and it was about knowing like, OK, well, how do I get the jab out there? How does my my hand turn? And, you know, what is my what is my hand doing? You know, mm -hmm. am I making a fist or, you know, what what have you? And um, it's uh it's more detail oriented. And I think that's some of the thing that uh, going back to your, your earlier question of having problems with um, being a couple in training yeah. is that that understanding of the difference of the way that we think, because that was a lot of, I think Clay and I's problem in the beginning is that he would tell me to do something and I'd be like, well, no, wait, I need to know how to do it. Like tell me specifically every single detail before I ever try it, Right. Yeah. how to do it. Yeah. And then I'll do it. And he's like, no, yeah. I just want you to do it. Like, you just need to, you need to feel it. And um, it's, uh, that's something that I've, I've kind of had to <clears throat> meet in the middle on a little bit um, mm -hmm. because it's, it's about having the balance of both, I right. think, that, that really gets you to the best that you can be um, is, is using that, that side of, you know, your brain that wants to break things down and have the details, but also to just try things sometimes yeah. just to, just to do it. It's all part of the, the adventure of learning. Right. But, right. um, so for those who, 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 who don't know about it, tell us a little bit about what I call, I think you called it also the Kung Fu adventure, the whole, <laughs> the whole packing after the honeymoon. Yep. <laughs> yep. That, that was definitely an adventure. Yeah. It's funny looking back, like a lot of people obviously thought we were crazy. And um, looking back, I was like, yeah, we were a little crazy. But at the time, I, uh, I, I didn't give it a second thought. I mean, it was just it was what we were doing. And yeah. 
this was the path that we needed to go on and this is where we needed to go to get where we wanted to be. Yeah. And um, it, I mean, I don't regret anything at all, right. any of it. So it's, um, it's been a crazy journey, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, oh, sorry. I think I got somebody knocking on our door. <laughs> go away. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So we, uh, yeah, we, we packed up uh, right after the honeymoon and um, moved over and moved right in with, uh, with Sifu Singh into his spare bedroom and uh, were there with him um, for, I think, maybe a year until we moved into our place in Monterey, mm -hmm. and, uh, which I love. I, I, miss, I miss Monterey a lot. Oh, yes. Yeah so amazing so beautiful i mean it's the most beautiful place that i've yeah. ever seen and i've been to you know tropical places too but it's it's gorgeous um but uh you know the the, the training aspects you know it's just it's it's really hard to describe i mean getting that much every single day from uh, who i think is the best martial artist in the world the best philosopher in the world mm -hmm. the best athlete in the world i mean he's he's just He's such an amazing person and to get to to soak in all of that every day is just i mean it's it's incomparable i mean it's yeah. it's something that you can't replace yeah. um but it was definitely it was definitely a challenge i yeah. mean <laughs> <laughs> being with somebody that that's uh, that, that that's that amazing uh definitely comes with its its challenges like yeah. uh it's really funny we had um days where we would uh go for runs a lot of the time and I think we'd go for like a mile and a half, two mile run. And of course, he's just like sprinting the entire time. And I'm back there just like huffing and puffing and dying. And oops, um, we, uh, we would get back and he, <laughs> we would play this game that I called Beat the Gate. Um, he had this uh, automatic gate that would open and close. And so once he would get back, which was way before we would, he would punch in the code for his gate and the gate would open and then there'd be so long before the gate would close. <laughs> and he's like, you better be back in this gate before it closes. I don't want you typing in no code. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, and uh, I, I remember this one time I was especially tired and I almost got crushed by the gate. <laughs> it wasn't one of those that like stops when you like walk in front of it. It was right. like, it's, it's not, it's not stopping for anybody. It's going to oh, close. God. If, you know, if you're inside of it, and I like barely squeeze through. I don't think I ever even told him that. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, well, he knows now because he's on yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then and, you know, after the run, of course, he'd be like, "Okay, we're warmed up. Let's uh, let's start our you know yeah, start two hour, three hour training session." So, wow. yeah. <laughs> and we'd go and spar for you know an hour straight. But it was it was amazing, and to get as a woman to get that um, that kind of pressure from him was so important to me and I had to beg him for it mm -hmm. I had to literally beg him to give me that kind of pressure uh of course because you know he didn't want to beat up a girl right um but I I needed it and I knew that I needed it from him because he um he, you know he has he has everything he has yeah. you know has the athleticism he has the skill he has the knowledge so that was really important to me how then do you deal with a girl who says, oh, I don't know if I could put the thumbs into somebody's eyes. I don't know if I could bite the ear or what. It, how do you deal with that? Hmm, that's a good question, Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> really glad you asked that. Um, <laughs> it's like you're reaching into my brain <laughs> knowing exactly what to ask. Um, yeah, that's, that's huge. And I get that a lot. And right. my instant answer is one if they have children i tell them imagine somebody is taking your child from you mm -hmm. they're taking they're dragging your child out of your home i mean wh would you would you put somebody your fingers in somebody's eyes then to stop them from mm -hmm. from tearing your child away from you and, and you know hurting hurting your family Right. Um, so it's, it's all about the mindset. It's all about being in the correct mindset to uh, apply the correct amount of, of violence. Um, obviously, you don't want to put 
fingers in somebody's eyes that's coming to ask you what time it is. Um, <laughs> and we also push that because right, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to, uh, you know, you don't want to disfigure somebody that's, uh, you know, just coming up to you to, um, you know, not cause you harm and just be so scared that you just react. Um, you have to, you have to be able to know when to do what you need to do. And that, that's, that, I think that's missed a lot in training, um, especially for women, is, is addressing that level of violence and when to, um, when to put that, that amount of violence in. What if, uh, okay, let me, let me try to throw you a curveball, <laughs> right? What if she's single and childless, mm -hmm. right? Um, and she just wants to start feeling more confident. She just wants, she just wants you to help her to start valuing her, valuing herself more highly. Uh, yeah, I mean, we obviously have um, teach the the different levels. I mean, there's you know someone who is you know just uh, approaching you, um, and you know, obviously, you know, you have to take care of it, but then you're not, you don't actually have to follow up and, and destroy them. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, as far as, you know, just wanting to have more confidence, I think that, that that's it. Just knowing that if the situation arose, that you could take care of yourself and get away. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's all about, you know, knowing how far you need to go and knowing simplified options that don't take too much um but you know m martial arts is the answer i mean it's it's the answer for you know with confidence and um and everything so yeah. obviously we have ways that we would like to build somebody up but i'm i'm not gonna say that you know you shouldn't go and learn boxing if, if boxing makes you feel good it makes you feel confident then that's great i mean go and go and do boxing if it's going to make you feel better it's just a woman doing boxing isn't going to be necessarily ap applicable in the street you know if she goes up against this huge dude she goes to try and punch him she's going to break her hand mm -hmm. um so it's uh it's about knowing what works and what doesn't and being aware of that and you know it's, it's i think that's a big key would, would you but would you recommend let's let's say it was somebody who let's say this was a non-martial artist and and it was somebody who wasn't even interested in martial art would mm -hmm. you would you still would you say still that um getting physical is a road towards confidence absolutely yeah absolutely yeah yeah and i think that the quicker people understand that i mean it's saying that you're not interested in martial arts and you don't think that that's the right thing for you to me is kind of like saying uh i'm not really interested in going to the doctor and getting a checkup i'm not really interested in it's, it's, all these necessities in life mm -hmm. it's just another necessity i mean mm -hmm. it's it's an important part of um of uh, d definitely of confidence i mean yeah. i don't think that that women can truly have confidence if they don't know how to defend themselves. So that's the bottom line for me is that oh, that's if you interesting. want confidence, right. then you need martial arts. You need something to know that if something happened, yeah. you could handle yourself. Um, yeah. So that's, that's my take. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. More politics. <clears throat> oh. All right. Is there anything that a man who is teaching martial arts to a woman could never understand. <laughs> Did you read something that I wrote? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot and I know that it's going to make some people angry. I know that people are going to come back and say, well, are you saying that uh, guys are going to come back and say, are you saying that I shouldn't teach women? And I'm absolutely not saying that. I'm not, at all bashing guys that want to teach women martial arts. Of I think course that's not. amazing. I yeah. think that that's a beautiful thing. And, and the more that people that are out there that are teaching this stuff is it, the better. Right. Um, but I think that it is really important for women to, if possible, get knowledge and um, 
applications from another woman or at least speak with them about it so that they understand because there's things that that guys just don't understand uh, about like what women have to go through or what women have to do to defend themselves because they're they're the bigger person Mm -hmm. they're the bigger person maybe most of the time the stronger person so the things that are going to work for them aren't necessarily the things that are going to work for women Mm -hmm. um and obviously you know they can you know be taught that but again it's it's just it's getting that that knowledge and um the experiences from another woman firsthand that I think is really important. And I think that me being uh, a, a woman who came up in martial arts with without any um, female role models in the beginning, um, right. I was just training with guys. I was pretty much yeah. the only girl in here for the first um, few years. And yeah. I think looking back, I don't regret anything. And I don't regret my process because it made me who I am. But <clears throat> I think that I definitely could have um, gotten better and, and improved from the experiences of a woman. And I have since, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. learning from Tanya, um, Subing Subing, which is one of my biggest role models. Yeah. I love her so yeah. much. Yeah. Tanya, she's the best. if you're watching, I love you. <laughs> she's the best. <laughs> um, yeah. She's such an inspiration. And to me, she uh, she really embodies everything that I want lady cobra to be because when you when you watch her talk and you you're with her she's just this amazing bundle of warm Mm -hmm. energy and she's so happy and she's got this motherly protection that you just feel so comfortable around but then you watch her fight or you watch her train and oh my god there's just there's this ferocity that like i i think is scarier than most of the guys that i know i mean it's it's just it's something that uh, it's it's that balance, uh, yeah. like you said, the yin and the yang, and she um, she embodies all of it. So yeah. it's, it's it's amazing. It's, it, it really is. She's amazing. Yeah, but would you would you um, recommend or advise a, a, an all women kung fu school? Um, that is the goal. I wouldn't say school necessarily and and say that it's just like a a women only school. Maybe. I mean, I think that that could have its, um, its positives. Uh, but that, that's my goal with, uh, Lady Cobra for Mm -hmm. sure is to have this, uh, this movement, um, this place for women to, to come together and learn from each other and share in -hmm. their knowledge and, um, and be together in that. And then, you know, it, I think it's also important for, for women to still train with guys as well. Right. Um, and get that energy too. Yeah. So I don't think that, I, I, if that answers your question, I, <laughs> I, I don't think that girls should only ever train with other girls. I think that we need to train with guys too. And I think that guys need to train with girls as well. So. Right. <laughs> what, um, what's the thing, what's the thing you'd like for the, for the whole world to know about martial arts? whole world to know yeah. about martial arts oh dwight <laughs> <laughs> no we don't have three hours i'm sorry <laughs> you asked for it <laughs> um well for me personally it's been about self-discovery mm-hmm. i was a huge tomboy when i was little and i um my mom put me in a bunch of different stuff. I did ballet, I did gymnastics, um, and I never really connected to anything. Um, I was... Because you're not uh, normal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know she's watching, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, you know, I, I watched Power Rangers. I was a big Power Rangers nerd and I watched WWE and, uh, all the pieces were there, but mm-hmm. I was never exposed to martial arts when I was younger. And I, I, it, it definitely makes me a little sad because I know that if I would have found it, I would have loved it. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, I'm a big believer in everything happening for a reason. Right. And yeah. Me and you got finding. no regrets. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, but when I did find it, you know, it, it, it was really the thing that was missing from my life. I mean, it, it, com- 
it sounds kind of corny, but it completed me. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it made me whole. Yeah. And that's it amazing. I mean, that, that in itself is, is so inspiring, not just for, for women. That's inspiring for, for everybody to just, to just be able to, to solidly identify martial art as your thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The thing that I was supposed to do. That's beautiful. It's, it's destiny. That's beautiful. I mean, it's, and it's funny because if I never would have found clay, um, and, you know, even if I would have found clay, but maybe the timing wasn't right, I wouldn't have found martial arts. I never would have been introduced to this world, and I never would have been whole. I never mm -hmm. would have found that thing that, that completed me. And, I, I, I mean, I just imagine there's so many people out there that have the same thing, and they're walking around with their lives half empty yeah. and not even knowing that martial arts is a possibility, and it's something that could make them so much happier and give their life so much more substance yeah. and that's that's been the biggest thing for me is just i look back at like my time before i did martial arts and i'm like god what was i doing like <laughs> it just I, it doesn't make any sense to me i was just like i was just walking through life just gonna you know yeah willy-nilly and i um i didn't really have anything that i really believed in and it's that's been so important to me is to have something real to believe in and to follow and all the traditions and everything they just it makes me so happy to mm -hmm. to have that in my life so i it's for everybody out there that you know yeah never tried martial arts and not sure you know if you want to just try it yeah. <laughs> so so uh okay so so let's let's start to wrap this up right so there's this <laughs> there's this guy right and you have the same last name that he has Okay. Okay. And, and he was a dialogue partner of mine a few months ago. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think I opened up his dialogue with this question. How important is the love and support? <laughs> I meant to give you some kudos on that, by the way, when I first started. Because I was, <laughs> I was sitting there uh, listening, uh, I think in the other room at the time, and I was like, oh. Dwight, you're a genius. <laughs> right. a great, for a great first question. <laughs> right. Okay, so for every, so for everybody who who does it, right? So the question was, how important is the love and support of a good woman? And he said words to the effect that it's everything. You can't get anywhere without it, right? And like I said, I'm I'm very intrigued by successful martial arts couples and you guys are the epitome of that um but is the love and support of a good man identical to what he was talking about or, or is it is no because okay, men and go. women are different you know right, yeah. <laughs> we already talked about this <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that yeah but i'm old and slow see so you gotta tell me again right? <laughs> um yeah no i mean it's it's definitely been i i mean i I owe him everything, you know, I'll never be able to repay him for helping me find this, this amazing thing, this amazing life. And, um, being able to live this, this life with him is just, it's such a blessing. So he's, he's the reason, he's yeah. the reason that I found this bliss and this passion that just can't be replaced. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so plug two things for me. You guys have the retreat coming up. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. This year is just crazy, crazy year. We just got back from California with Sifu Singh. We were filming for Century Martial Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Jake Kudo for Black Belts, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we're leaving in a few days to Oklahoma to um, shoot for, uh, do a photo shoot for the cover of Black Belt Magazine. Mm -hmm. Um and a couple other things. And then we have our retreat, obviously, at the end of this month, um, which I'm really excited about, especially for this year. But mm -hmm. I'm super bummed because you're not going to be there. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, but but, uh, I, but I, really I never sad. got a reply. Is it an annual thing? Because if it is, I'll be yeah. there. Okay. I'll be there for sure next year. Then, yeah. Without, without Every fail, year. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Very good. All right. Because yeah, we were all sitting there bummed for know, like, a long time after yeah. we got your message. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got to go see my dad. Yeah. Uh, did, I did, hope you see, did you see, um, did you see the dialogue episode with Andy Kimura when at the end he put the camera on Seagung Taki? 
No, I, oh, I watched yeah. some of it and then it cut out on me and I wasn't able to watch the rest. So I'll have to go back in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, 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 on, it's, it's on the final edit. Oh my God. I, I, yeah. I, I almost freaked out when he did that, you know? Right. That gives me chills. I just, yeah. <laughs> I just got chills. Yeah. And, uh, That's awesome. and, and then tell everybody quickly about Lady, Lady, I mean, they heard us mention it, but tell everybody about Lady Cobra, uh, JKD. Yeah. Uh, so if uh, any, anybody's interested in more information, uh, it's, it's a, an organization, a movement for women, by women. Um, and we have our website is, I think, under construction at this moment, but it's Lady Cobra Movement dot com um and then on there there's a little place where you can put your email and stuff for updates on when the yeah. site will go you know live and but there and there is a there's there is a facebook page though right there is a facebook yeah it's i think it's facebook.com slash lady cobra or lady cobra jkd yeah i probably should have had that <laughs> just, search, <laughs> just search lady cobra yeah. and you'll find it um yeah and uh, of course there's a lot of stuff about it on on my page as well so all right <clears throat> Okay. All right. So who, who, uh, who, did you think of anybody that I should uh, try to get on the show? Um, well, one, I think you already have scheduled, uh, Gun Mr. Gunner Davis, my yes. annoying little brother. <laughs> 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 no, I love him. I yeah. love him. He's yeah. amazing. He's yeah. the reason that we claim I've been able to do what we've done. He's been such an amazing, uh, leader for this gym and, and run everything. And he's, very intelligent, knowledgeable, skillful. I mean, he's he's gonna be. I can't wait for his interview with you. So except it's, that he, except that he, he he copies you uh, in Savat videos. I, I noticed <laughs> that, right? Now, apparently, I copied him because we went back and forth. <laughs> no, like, no, no, who started? No. Was the chicken or the egg that started it? And then Clay came back with, "Actually, you two shut up," because it was Singh that right. started it from the very get go. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you got yeah. us but uh other than that um we we have i i, I think that you should have sifu Singh on again because i think you oh, probably sure. have five more interviews with him and you yeah. wouldn't get yeah, 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 all yeah. the knowledge and yeah. amazingness and of course same thing with with clay yeah um, but I, I i before before i bring uh sifu Singh on i i gotta work out you know because his energy will just it'll just come like right through the phone <laughs> yeah. you know and if you're not, bounces off the walls yeah. it's yeah. yeah. If you're He's not amazing. if you're not ready for that, you know, you're gonna get yourself into some serious trouble. <laughs> some serious trouble, right? Yeah. He'll be yeah. having you work, working out during your your interview. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course. Okay. Is 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 Kali down there with you? He is. He got off the uh, he got off the couch. Let me see if I can turn this. There you go. Oh, there he is. All right. He's sprawled out on the mat, <laughs> being a big lazy bum. I just noticed that our Bruce Lee pictures in our background, they're like perfectly aligned. Uh -huh. It's really funny. Hey, hey man. <laughs> there, there's symmetry all over this thing, right? <laughs> hey, well, listen, thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate oh, thank it. You. Right? You thank are, you. Thank you so much for having me. You're an inspiration to many, many of us out there. This uh, it's gone so by so fast. Has it really already been that yeah, long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we don't have three hours. My phone's gonna run out of battery pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine is too. But, yeah, but the, <laughs> don't don't worry. One one day I'll show up in Texas with my camera crew, right? And we'll do it live from there. Nice. All right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah. everybody here will do a big group interview. It'll be yep, awesome. There you go. All right. Well, thanks awesome. again. And give my regards to everybody out there. I will. Okay? And, I sure uh, will. Yeah, we'll do this again. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Thank okay. you so much for All having right. me. Take care. Have a good one. You too. All right. All right. Nice one. Nice one. Okay, so that was uh, episode number 60, you guys, of the uh, Jeet Kune Do Dialogues with uh, Beverly Pratka. So ch you can check them out at uh, Texas Jeet Kune Do um, Athletic Association and uh, also, like she said, on Facebook at um, Lady Cobra uh, JKD. She's a, she's a stalwart example of you know, what I call the JKD femme fatale energy, you know, everything I've seen of her, she's in there hanging with the guys and giving a, as good as, as, as she's getting. So um, I really appreciate her uh, taking the time out to do this. All right. Um, 
I'm working on confirming uh, another JKD Femme Fatale for next Friday. However, if that doesn't work out, uh, Sifu, uh, Nick Faruqi um, asked me if he could interview me about JKD teaching. So we might do that next Friday if I'm not able to uh, confirm my, 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 my special uh, female guest. So I'll let you know about that during the week, right? Um, so thanks everybody for uh, for showing up and spending some time with uh, the, the 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 beastly beauty and me. Um, feel free to share, like, and comment. Uh, ask questions. I'll review everything. I'm sorry that I'm not able to um, re-comment while while we're live. I'll review everything after posting. Um, sign up for notifications for when we go live on Facebook and also when we. Um, when we post the final edits on the uh, YouTube channels. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods, on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. Uh, I love JeetKundo.com. The Quick Skill Series Volume 1 is still available. I told you about um, next Friday. And uh, I'll, see you, uh, so I'll see you back here uh, next week, um, same time, and we'll see what we do then. Everybody, enjoy your weekend. Have a good one. Take care.